Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch and we have some more great news on the Blender front and yet another large company has come on board to the Blender Development Fund and today's company is a bit of a head scratcher. In some ways they make so much sense. In other ways they are competitors. So I guess we're talking about frenemies here, uh, but Adobe has joined the Blender Development Fund. Uh, so they're going to join it at the gold tier level. We don't have a ton to go from here. This is kind of a quick story because quite frankly, here I am on the Blender site and this is the press release. Today, Blend, uh, today Adobe announced they will join the Blender Foundation's Development Fund as a corporate gold member. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, contributions from corporate members directly support core Blender development for generally approved projects on Blender.org. And then we've got two comments, one from uh, the guys at Adobe and one from the chairman of the Blender Foundation, Ton Rosendale. So the first one from Adobe, we are thrilled Adobe is joining the Blender Development Fund to help ensure the longevity and success of this dynamic open source community, said Sebastian Deguy, VP of 3D and Immersive... And immersive Okay, <laughs> that's a weird title. A VP of 3D and Immersive at Adobe. Uh, and that's part of where I want to come back to is they're actually kind of moving into this segment, which makes this a little strange. Uh, we're excited to help strengthen and improve this accessible suite of tools. And then from Ton Rosendale, this is a great step forward. It's a prime example of the industry increasingly accepting to work with free slash open source software. And that is it. That is the announcements we've got. So a little bit of backstory, the Blender Development Fund is basically how Blender is paid for. We've got a number of employees working full-time at Blender, and with every one of these, we kind of get more and more. Essentially, what this buys us is half of an employee. So at the corporate level, they are sponsoring for 30,000 euro per year uh, is the uh, the commitment that Adobe has made at this point. And if you were wondering in terms of how funded Blender currently is, well, they've got a combination of individual funding. Uh, so you see here different tiers of that from everywhere from uh, individuals paying $300 a month to individuals paying $60 a month uh, to support the development of Blender. And of course, we get into the corporate sponsors. We currently have 25 corporate sponsors. We have $160,000 of monthly contributions and 2,638 individuals contributing towards Blender's development. And in terms of the companies, at the patron level, this is either a huge one-time donation or um, yeah, pretty much all of these are huge one-time donations at this point in time. We've got companies like Epic, uh, they give them $1.2 million, NVIDIA, AMD, Unity, Facebook, and AWS. And this all makes sense. Every one of these companies, especially when you consider Oculus is in that link, they benefit from the existence of Blender. Actually, almost everybody here benefits to a certain degree from. Uh, so we're looking now at the corporate level. That's where Adobe slots in. They join Ubisoft. It's actually Ubisoft Animation, Embark, Blender Market, Intel, and Tangent Labs. And then we've got another a number of other companies in here. So we got Google, Steam Workshop, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, it's weird because we're missing a bunch that used to be here. I swore Microsoft used to be on this list. Now we're kind of getting to the point where there's a few people that you're kind of like, okay, where did they go? Because you think the other companies that really benefit from the existence of uh, Blender, well, we're not going to see Autodesk anytime soon. If we, if we see Autodesk, you're just going to hear a video of me laughing pretty much nonstop. Uh, but the one that's really glaring is, is there's no Apple. And oddly, there's no Microsoft now. And I swear Microsoft used to be on here. So uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but anyways, uh, Adobe has joined the fold. Uh, and again, I find this a little bit interesting just because of Adobe's recent announcements. Going back to just June, so last month, Adobe announced um, the creation of Substance 3D Collection, which is basically Adobe loves their subscriptions, and Substance got put into a subscription. But at the same time, they also talked about a couple of 3D products they're working on, one of which is Stager. Stager isn't really a new product. What it is is Adobe Dimensions, and, and Stager is all about setting up 3D scenes, models, lighting, so on, so you can do virtual photographs and rendering. Um, and that's kind of it's sort of in the same realm as Blender, but not 100%. But the other thing that they actually launched is they've got brand new Substance 3D Modeler, a 3D modeling tool in VR and just normal um, that is kind of going after sort of the ZBrush thing. But 3D modeling in sculpting is one of those areas where Blender is really getting a heck of a lot better. So Adobe just last month announced a product to compete with Blender, and then this month they announced that they are supporting Blender. It's, it's an interesting world of um, frenemies or, or however you want to put it. Because uh, on the one hand, you know, a lot of Adobe customers, they still do texture mapping work. So they would use something like um, 
uh, say, uh, Photoshop for doing texturing. It's pretty common, probably the most commonly used texture creation tool. So they sell licenses of Photoshop to Blender users. But at the same time, Blender also does things like video editing, which directly competes with, say, Adobe Premiere or um, Flash, Fireworks, that kind of stuff. Or they, again, they're moving into this sculpting space with this new Substance 3D modeler, and that is a direct competitor to Blender. So it's an interesting move that uh, Adobe is coming on board. Uh, $30,000, 30,000 euros per year. I guess it kind of depends on how you look at money. But when you look at uh, corporations, like that's to Adobe, uh, that's like a third of an employee. Uh, so it's it's not really like, you know, going to make or break. But there's a more of a, I guess, a moral win here or a support or a show of where the industry is going. Uh, but it is kind of interesting. And I actually would be curious to hear your opinion here. Is it Adobe a competitor or angling to be a competitor with Blender, or are they uh, parallel companies that can be mutually beneficial, or is it a bit of all of the above? Uh, it's an interesting announcement. It's not really one that I was really expecting to see. Now, I expected Adobe way, way before I expect to hear about Autodesk on this list, um, and I'd like to see Microsoft and uh, yeah, Microsoft and uh, Apple should definitely step up because both platforms benefit from uh, Blender being on their platform, especially Apple, who did like their own silicon, the M1 chips that needed to be ported and uh, to handle all that. I know they did some of the work in-house, but you know you could step up and support there. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the list of companies that are currently supporting them, um, it, it's pretty comprehensive. Again, there were some on here. I, I have to go back and look at the previous video. I swore Microsoft was on here, so. Uh, it must just be that they're no longer supporting it. I, I'm not 100% certain. But uh, yeah, that, that is the announcement for today. Adobe is now a corporate gold sponsor on the Blender Foundation. The Blender Foundation is, of course, the organization that funds the development of Blender. Uh, so even if that went away, by the way, Blender would still remain uh, under development. This does not give Adobe any real control over Blender. It's nothing to be afraid of in that regard. It's just more resources for the Blender team, and it is the foundation that decides where development work happens, not the people coming on board. Now, it's interesting, though, some of these sponsorships, for example, AWS, when they came on board, they said, okay, we're going to fund this thing specifically. So they came on board uh, to fund uh, improvements to animation tools. So every once in a while, I'm not going to say the, there's caveats on the money, but sometimes corporate sponsors sponsor a very specific thing. At the same time, uh, Ubisoft is uh, pushing theirs is for... Uh, 2D and 3D animation stuff. So uh, they've released some tools on collaborative editing and that kind of stuff. So some of these companies want to see Blender developed in a certain direction. And sometimes it is a grant for a very specific reason. But this case, uh, especially as you see from the announcement right here, uh, direct to support core Blender development. So this one is just generally approved projects. Nothing, nothing really specific about this one. And no, you don't have to worry. Adobe isn't going to own or have a stake in or control the future of Blender. Um, in fact, even if you look at just the straight level of their donations, they're a relatively small fish in the developer fund. So they're really just... Uh, there's just upsides to this, but I would be curious what you think in terms of this. Are they enemies? Are they competitors? Are they friends? Are they a bit of all of the above? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.